What's up, everybody? It's Brand Man Sean, and this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself. Now, this video is a second part of an interview series that in the first two, I'm covering Kanye West. And these breakdowns are about how do you be effective in an interview. The first one, Kanye West wasn't really doing too well. Dapper Dan was having the same message and it was received far better, but there's been a year's difference between that Kanye back then and what Kanye is doing now. He's made a lot of improvements in this series. I want to talk about how he's made improvements and what he's doing that actually is creating a climate where his message is being received far better than before. Again, I can't use interview snippets because people get all wild with YouTube and the copyrights. However, I will be reading quotes. I think it'll be extremely helpful. And then we have some other key insights from how Kanye packages himself and presents himself at the very end. So let's hop into it. All right, so let's start with this quote. Kanye said, I've been canceled. I've been canceled before they had cancel culture. I was canceled before they had the term. And then Big Boy responds, do you care about any of that? And then Kanye then emphatically says, I do. I care about everything. Now, when Kanye in so many ways have depicted himself as in a sense of I'm a superhero, I don't really care, nothing bothers me. And then you see this contrast is actually a lot more powerful to show that you have passion and you do care, particularly how he presents his goals. It's far more in alignment to say that you have this vulnerability and you care about everything so much, which now justifies why you act how you act. So that's one thing that helps. But then on the second level of vulnerability, that really helps him have power in terms of how these interviews are perceived versus other ones is the fact that if he said things like, I mean, dressing people in all white all the time was kind of cultish, admitting that he was doing some things and understanding, right, how people perceive things. So there's a power in not making it seem like everybody else is just crazy and saying, yo, you, you get it and admitting your own fault as a leader that also creates an environment of transparency, right? It earns respect because vulnerability strengthens the team and it strengthens just the entire outlook of how people build trust with you as a culture. When they know that you don't think you're as perfect, people who also have some level of self-esteem will now intellectually be able to accept you a little bit more. When you seem and present yourself as completely perfect, the only people that will, will follow you heavily will be the people who have so much insecurity that they're looking for this person who's perfect. And that's when we get into the cult mode, right? We're getting into the mode of we're following this icon, this iconoclast, this figure because they fill a void and they're higher than me. Kanye has had that trouble because so many times he's kind of positioned and presented himself as that. Now, when you present an argument this way, not saying that everybody now agrees with him, statements like that and admitting your fault now positions people to one, care, two, feel like he might not be completely delusional. So maybe I can listen to him. And then another thing that he said was he was lost, right? He tried to hold everything in in his own brain. And these type of statements also, once again, of course, presents vulnerability, but it also positions him for a comeback or positions him to be able to climb a mountain. He's on a new journey, which starts him over fresh versus once again, how he's presented himself beforehand. Now, the second thing is huge. And we don't see it as much as we, you would think with Kanye. And that is the power of we, right? Kanye said we went to from one to four to one to three, but we always point in at the white people. But we spend all of our money on foreigns. We want to spend all of our money on luxury instead of buying some land. America is for sale. Now, of course, this particular statement might create a lot of feelings one way or another, but that's not what this particular breakdown is about. Just look at how many times he said we. Right. Where so many times Kanye has just said I and we can look at this again when we check out another one of his statements. He starts off by saying this is one of my main things. It's like, what is the culture? 
It's like, man, this ain't for the culture. We doing something for the culture. We orphans, bro. We are cultureless. We don't have our own culture. We sign to culture vultures. We sign our lives away. Our contracts are culture vultures. Now, again, he says we several times in this particular statement. And typically, so many things that Kanye says is a lot more I-oriented. I, 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 I. And if you don't understand the difference in power of saying we versus I, particularly when you're in a leadership standpoint, Point and trying to run a movement, then you can check out this article, which I'll also put in the description that can be found in the Harvard Business Review. It's titled, If You Want to Be the Boss, Say We, Not I. That alone gives you an idea of the power versus one and the other. In the reading through that article, you'll find two key frameworks. They're saying there's a such thing as others oriented, and then there's also a thing called self-oriented. Here's a quote referring to some of the results from the article. The study's results imply that higher status individuals do demonstrate an other's orientation significantly more than lower status individuals. Now, what that's alluding to is again saying higher status individuals, whether that's in a corporation you're higher up or whatever type of movement, whatever the architecture is and the authoritative ladder is, the people that are higher up, tend to use we more than I. And some inferences that can be made from that is, one, when you say we and be more focused on others, you serve others, and then that puts you in a position to be higher up. And also just the idea of people who are trapped on a, in a lower status are still more focused on survival. Those are just some of the potential inferences. But again, this all leads back to Kanye using language that's a lot more refined than he was in that original media run back when he was saying you ain't got the answer sway and I'm this I'm that he still has that sprinkle in but he's getting better at delivering his message which to some people obviously can be dangerous another thing that Kanye is doing is being a lot more open to perspective right he said I can't tell you how to feel but I can tell y'all how I feel Right. Saying something like that is, look, I'm not the person who's in charge of all this. If usually it's a language where it's like, yo, you got to follow me. I'm the right one. I'm the right one. Now he's acknowledging that there's other valid perspectives other than his. And he's open for discourse. But he's really trying to push the message and make sure he, the world knows how he feels. That's far more credible from a standpoint of touching the intellectuals or people who are thinking and not just blindly following him than he was before. Another quote that he had was him saying that when he was around some white people, they essentially said, I didn't think you liked Trump because of the racism. And now his response was that, so you mean to tell me that I would make every decision based off my color? The most racist thing someone can tell me is that I'm supposed to choose something because of my color. Whether you agree with that statement or not, he's again setting the ground for different opinions and different ways of thinking in a far more credible way. Because he then goes on to say, let's agree to disagree, which is something you really hadn't heard Kanye say on a platform before. Right. And the last thing, but not least, is simply vision. And when you couple vision with the other elements that we've already discussed in this particular video, your message starts to become far more impactful. But I'd like to end with some of the things that I observed from Kanye just running through this particular video and doing some research. It seems that Kanye is truly a beacon for a lot of the millennial narrative, which is you can change the world. You can change the world. So many people have heard that. So many people are thinking that and believing that it's a message across so many different industries. Build something that will change the world. Make an impact. What impact will you individually make versus necessarily being on a team? Some people think that has a negative impact and millennials are too selfish and worrying about themselves and their individual impact. But the point is that this is definitely a common narrative that you're hearing a lot of over the last decade, honestly. And Kanye, where you can even look at this and think of it more, is it's interesting because a lot of the dynamic that he has and a lot of the conflict that comes from it is because he's always coupling this we and this self-serving nature, right? This or others-oriented and this self-oriented. And what I mean by that is, Yes, even if he says, I want to do all of these things to change the world. I want to help so many people. I want to do all this great stuff. His intention 
often comes in question because of how he presents it, right? He does still use a lot of eye-oriented language, and he does oftentimes talk about his position and how great he is. And even if you look at the way he's approached industry, saying things like there's already a greatest of all time in hip hop, there's already a greatest of all time in, in basketball, Michael Jordan, and greatest of all time in pop music, Michael Jackson, right? It looks like he analyzes these particular categories and says that he wants to be the greatest of all time of some something and recognized for that and seeing that there's already that in certain places means that he's not going to pursue that because he recognizes that you can't overcome it based on the already established brand awareness that's been created for those figures and when you think about it like that it's more so a question of do you want world impact for the sake of world impact and really changing the world or do you want to make that world impact because of what it would do for you Right. And yes, there is a perspective of saying, well, that's perfect if silvering self is actually also in line with what's best for the public. But that's one of the things that just seems to cause what he does into question. He's approached a lot of different categories, music, fashion, Christianity, porn. He's basically talked about these different categories and he's chosen where he wants to be the greatest of all time. Once again, based on his analysis, it seems on where it's actually possible to not only be the greatest or make an actual literal impact, but actually be acknowledged for it. And yes, I did say porn for those who are wondering. There's a time period where he was actually trying to revolutionize porn. But I think part of that choice comes to the fact that, yo, you're not going to be acknowledged on a pop scale for your impact in porn. It's, it's not the same thing. And then in Christianity, he's already noted that you're not going to be bigger than Jesus. So, yes, I have this Christianity hat that I I hold. But at the same time, I can't really overcome Jesus. It's going to be hard for me to do the same thing in music. But fashion, there's open space there. I have a lot of talents, but my biggest talent when we speak about Kanye is just taking something and making it pop culture and bringing it pop awareness. Again, that's one of the things that brings so much conflict, right? Because there's a difference between being the greatest and being recognized as the greatest. Yes, they can both happen, but there's so many times where it doesn't happen. Even Gary Vee has acknowledged that, saying that he wants to be recognized as not only like one of the greatest entrepreneurs, but also like the best, like nicest entrepreneur that you could be a billionaire or, or be super successful and not be an asshole. And he could be the one who revolutionizes that. But he's also acknowledged that there's other people who have already done that, right? There, Warren Buffett is like one of the nicest guys in the world as far as what you hear about him. And you hear that about other people and other people has, have created even a lot of different entrepreneurs and impacted so many people. But Gary knows how to do it on a pop level. He said he's going to be the first rock star entrepreneur, right? There's a difference between understanding that the greatest, they, there's a lot of skill set, a lot of, you know, numbers, a lot of absolute reality and criteria that goes into it. However, when you talk about being recognized as the greatest, most of that is straight up popularity and public awareness. And that's the biggest difference. A last example is Tesla versus Edison, Nikola Tesla versus Thomas Edison, right? Tesla was far more prolific, great scientist. However, Thomas Edison was a far better marketer. And so you have companies like General Electric and you have the fact that, you know, he made far more money and and had this more pop appeal where Tesla without companies like Tesla that Elon Musk now owns and, and, and that particular name, a lot of people wouldn't even know that name at all. But it's more so a company that was started by somebody else that got greater appeal and him being recognized farther in hindsight than somebody like Thomas Edison, who's in the history books and got a lot of credibility and public awareness in his own time. That's the difference. So that's a lot in a lengthy video about Kanye, but I hope you're able to take some of those ideas and some of the things we've touched on to be able to figure out how you would like to approach interviews and actually see the evolution that he made in his interviews to hopefully be able to say, look, I have this message that I want to communicate on these interviews and I actually want to make an impact because I think a lot of people wrongly 
copy Kanye. A lot of artists think that that's the right way to be, and they're kind of mimicking him versus being their own personality when they can actually have a stronger impact. Understanding that he's a unicorn and there's so many other things at work versus how he speaks. Even though how he speaks comes off as powerful and he gets attention, it's not necessarily why he's so great and why he makes the impact. As he actually evolves and refines his speech, he's positioning himself to make a greater impact. So stop looking at old Kanye, analyze where he's changed, how he's changed, and why that might have happened. Because that's probably going to give you an idea of what actually works and what just looks good. So that's the end of this video. If you like this video, go ahead hit the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.